Hello. I just wanted to uh, prequel this virtual field trip to Chicago. Um, we're on the train. Most most of the trips you take are start off on a train. So we're cruising to the Salt Lake City Airport and gonna get on the airplane there. Jump on the old four hour flight to Chicago. We'll be downtown Chicago in no time. But I'm excited for this virtual field trip and look forward to showing you some cool sights in Chicago. Depending on when it is for you, I'd like to say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I'm Mr. Weekman, and I'm going to be showing you the city of Chicago. Um, we're here now in the city. Uh, Chicago was actually incorporated as a city in 1837. Um, it's a wonderful place. I personally thought this would be a wonderful place for you guys to kind of come and see because I feel like it's a public art museum. Um, there's public sculptures all over the city and it's just a very beautiful city to be a part of. So I'm going to come bring you around to see that different public sculptures and talk about it a little bit. But I'll also be bringing you around just to see the city and the building and kind of experience that culture of Chicago, which is actually the third biggest city in the United States. Um, so that's pretty sweet. It's the biggest city in the Midwest and it's in the state of Illinois. So if you kind of are looking at the map of the United States, think in the very middle, right underneath one of the Great Lakes is where you can find it. I, uh, I'm excited for you to kind of see the city with me, and I'm excited to show you all this wonderful art. So I'll, uh, I'll be checking in with you. Good luck today. Buckle up and enjoy the video. Thank you. Behind me, you can see these sculptures. Uh, the sculpture name or the sculpture's title is Agora, and it's by the Polish artist Magdalena Abakanovich. Uh, the city of Skol or the city of Chicago has a huge Polish population, so they wanted to bring in a sculpture that would really kind of represent that group of people. Um, yeah, they're really a wonderful and really unique looking public sculpture. It's found in uh, a park that's in kind of like the central area of Chicago and right in the museum campus. So in a similar area that you can find a bunch of the other museums and things like that. So I'll kind of walk you around and show you the different um, angles and things like that that you can experience when you're looking at this pu public sculpture. It's really wonderful. It was created in about 2004 to 2006. And those were the time periods. and it's really something that I think is a unique sculpture that sets some of Chicago's um, Grant Park, it's called, which is that main park, apart from other places because of this wonderful sculpture. And it really, you know, sets the city apart. So I'll walk you around, show you this sculpture, and I hope you enjoy it. But be thinking about when you're looking at it, what could it mean? Um, the relation of the figures and the way they're standing to maybe what a big city's like. You know, what it's like to live in a big city where there's, you know, I think in Chicago there's like over 2.7 million people that live here. They have about 63 million uh, visitors every year. So there's all these people walking and all the different relationships of how you're walking and how you're, where you're walking next to these people. So think about that as you're looking at this art and enjoy the sculpture. Thank you.
quickly point out is there's 109 of the different like statues of the legs and the torso and the body um but there's about only 15 in the middle otherwise there's two big populations one of which is on the left side one of which is on the right side i think that says a lot about what the artist was trying to display in society and even in a big city is the idea that there's always two different really global perspective on things and even though they have two different sides they're still constantly interacting together and they still have to work together to become a society that thrives so i thought that was kind of interesting to point out thanks so i want to bring you inside this building to kind of show you how intricate these old hotels and these buildings really are as you go inside of them as well. So you have the architecture on the outside which maybe isn't as exciting but once you get inside of it you see the intricacies of the ceilings and the different pillars and the brickwork and things like that. So as I'm going to pan you up you're going to be able to see the ceiling and the different um, the brickwork and the intricacies of the leaves and all the different details that they include in these ceilings and buildings. So, as you can see here, there's this face with these flowers coming out of it. With the idea of Chicago trying to be a green area, uh, they made these heads and they put them all over the main strip in Chicago. And out of the back of their heads, they put greens, which in this case are flowers. Here's they're representing the Italian village restaurant, but it's also just the Italian people that live here in the city. Now if you go back beyond the head, you even see a jazz festival. In these parks, they have a lot of different things that are going on. Um, it's a very cultural center in this center area of the park, as you can see by this head and the jazz festival. Thank you so much. So I wanted to show you this great example of how in Chicago they have all these sculptures that you can interact with. And this is uh, from the artist Saya the Reigns Dortier. He is, uh, it's actually a work that was created in 2009 to 11, so it's a relatively new thing. And it's fun to see how people are interacting with it as you walk through a public sculpture area like this. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you right now here in Millennium Park still. Um, yeah, some great art, some great sculpture. See you later. So as you can see behind me, there's this huge sculpture of a lion. Now this is classic in um, around the art museums and bigger monumental places. There's a lot of different sculptures of lions in Europe and also in New York. And it kind of just is a, I don't know, a sign that you're near some sort of a museum or some sort of a public space where you can see historical things. So as you can see, this is a green lion. Actually, it wasn't green when it was created because then it greens kind of like the Statue of Liberty. Um, when the Statue of Liberty was started, it wasn't green, but now it's become a green statue because of the materials that were used to be made. Also in the background, you can see some live music going on. That's the fun thing about a big city is there's a lot of live music and things like that to experience. So as you're walking, you can kind of just experience these different bands and music and also huge green lions. 
want to show you the sculpture behind me. The sculpture is by the artist Henry Moore. Um, it was created in 1992. He was prominent for about 40 years, and in that time period when he was working, uh, he created all these different sculptures that kind of took down the human figure to the very bare essentials. So he's a part of the modernist movement, and in modern art, a lot of it was about taking away from what you see and more inflicting what you know. So this is very basic essentials of, you know, the torso, uh, the legs, and the head, and breaks it down to those different elements uh, because what else do you need to know about it? It's more about the movement and the look of it, the aesthetics of the work. Um, this work was created in 19, like, later in the 1900s, which is kind of crazy to think about what else is going on in that time period um, and what other artists are doing. So it's fun to think about when you're looking at artwork like this, what other artists were doing and how this artist reacted to those movements, reacted to those things that were happening. So this is definitely a minimalist work by Henry Moore. Thanks for checking it out. All right, I wanted to point this out to you because this is actually in art a different, a great example of an Art Nouveau piece. Now Art Nouveau is this time period where they really focused on decorative arts and bringing that into your everyday world. So Chicago went through and they made all their different entrances to their subway stations, um, this Art Nouveau style. So it's a lot about uh, the style of line that was used is very unique and decorative. Um, you can see how, you know, just the way these lines work around. It's not like it's just for um, the sake of being there and being functional, but it's for the sake of beauty. Uh, a lot of wallpaper actually is in the Art Nouveau style. So I thought it'd be kind of a fun example to show you the actual thing here in Chicago, where if you were looking at a textbook, you'd just be able to see a picture of it, and it maybe wouldn't have the same impact. So these are all around Chicago. is a wonderful example of architecture and how not necessarily does form have to follow function. Um, it's actually an architect named Frank Gehry is his name and he created this work uh, to be a kind of a concert center and a wonderful location for things to happen. But as you can see in a lot of his work it has these kind of spiraling almost exploding buildings. Um, I'll show some other examples throughout the, um, the year or in a different class where you can kind of see what Frank Gehry does with his architecture and his ideas behind it, but I just thought I'd want to show you it. Um, it's a wonderful space right on the edge of the park here in Chicago, and it's actually really close in relation to the beam, which we'll talk about next, actually. And then he also created this bridge that goes over the highway to get to a different part, section of the park. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy Frank Gehry's work. He's actually one of my favorite architects. He really plays with those ideas of what space can mean and how aesthetically the way it looks can really affect the viewer and the uses of it. Um, so it might be seem like it's a little useless because all the space is in use, but it's just an aesthetic beauty that he's going for. Enjoy his work. I'll show you the beam next. Alright class, now here we are at the beam. That's what it's referred to, but it's actually, the title is Cloud Gate. And the artist who created it was Anish Kapoor, and it's actually, it's funny that it's called Cloud Gate, it's a nice cloudy day, so it actually kind of shows why the artist and what the artist was thinking when they created it. Um, it's actually the most photographed sculpture in the whole entire world, at least it was in 2000, last year, 2012. So when you're watching this video, 2012, if it's past 2013. Fun fact. Anyway, um, it's really a really crazy sculpture that's stainless steel, and it's inspired by liquid mercury. So as you kind of look at it, think of like the Silver Surfer, and the way the Silver Surfer looks. So that's one of the things that's inspired by this liquid mercury. Um, 
it's really a wonderful sculpture because of the way that the sculpture and the form kind of uniquely has a shape that reflects all these different things. So people have all these creative photos by it, and it's the centerpiece of Chicago, um, right in the middle of the city. Everyone comes here. You got to check it out. It's right in the corner of Millennium Park. And it's Picasso actually did have a lot of skill and these abilities, but if you're maybe not a perfect person who can draw and you can't make someone look exactly how they should be, that's totally fine. This is a wonderful example how creativity goes beyond uh, mimesis, it's called, which is the art of making something look exactly the way it does in person. So, here's Picasso's statue. Uh, right in the center of a bunch of skyscrapers here in Chicago. Enjoy. wonderful place it's kind of like a shopping mall slash entertainment center and they also have this wonderful uh, sculptures here so as you can see behind me these are sculptures of boats now I don't even know who the artist is who created it but that doesn't mean I can't just enjoy the aesthetic beauty of the idea that we're at a pier and they took canoes and they like built this sweet abstract sculpture um, and that's what's kind of fun about being in a big city is you won't always know all the information that's in the city but that doesn't mean you can't just experience the um, aesthetic beauty that you see all around you. So I just wanted to kind of show you that and just talk a little bit about, you know, how to look at these public sculptures when you're in a city. Um, you can obviously research it and find out who the artist was and all those in, in that, that information, but the aesthetic beauty is really what the artist is going for. And that's what I want you to experience. So thank you so much. get to see the attention to detail that the artist put into the different uh, 
you know, the texture of the cushions or the, you know, the facial uh, expression that he put into it. Um, one fun fact about it is the idea that the artist actually sculpted himself in a chair. Uh, so he, it's a self-portrait of himself being peculiar with other people in that relationship. So if you're looking at the city of Chicago from a map, there's a point that comes out right in the heart that's Navy Pier. This is a wonderful place for you to not only kind of have a great time with your family and friends, but there's also different public sculptures like the boats that I showed you earlier. And there's just a nice vibe and a lot of things happening here. It's not only a shopping mall, um, it's a great place to get on some boats and see some different views of the city, like an architectural tour, which we'll be taking you on next here in the video. So, as you prepare and kind of watch this, Envision Navy Pier is like a key to the water and the key to the different views of the architecture that I'm going to show to you. So, this is Navy Pier and I'm excited for uh, this architectural tour. to talk a little bit about this architectural tour that we're going to bring you on. Um, as you kind of look at the buildings, I really want you to pick out the different nuances, the different little details that you can see in these because the architects all preconceived these ideas and they put them into the buildings. So as you're going through this river tour of water, um, really enjoy it. Check out the different buildings, look at the variety of different ways that the buildings look and have a good time. Um, it's crazy to see the architecture because a lot of the stuff was built in uh, about a 30 year period. So the Chicago Fire happened, they had a World's Fair, and they actually got the bid for the World's Fair. After the fire, they built about 300 buildings in the process of those 30 years, and they created the skyline, most of which we see today, was created in that time period. There's a bunch of new buildings that I'll show you and you can kind of see the different ages and the different styles of architecture. I won't go into super in-depth information into the architecture because I think it's just something that you can experience and if you want to learn more about architecture you can kind of discover that on your own. Um, architecture is a wonderful thing because it's all around us. It surrounds us. Um, enjoy this boat tour. Have a good time and buckle up. We're in we're in for a wild ride. Actually, it shouldn't be too wild, but it'll be a good time. So, we're going on a boat tour of Chicago. Enjoy the architecture.
Behind me here, you actually can see on the sides of this museum the Luxe, Luxar uh, cave drawings from France. They're the posters. But this is the Field Museum of Natural History here in Chicago. This is uh, the, so the museum campus here in Chicago. Um, it's a huge park. It's at the very end of Grant Park. And you got the Field Museum of Natural History. Then over here, we got the Shedd Aquarium. And then you got the lake and the big city skyline behind you. It's kind of an interesting place to hang out and there's a lot of people always. So yeah, fun place to check out if you ever enjoy. style, very similar to what you would think of when you think of like the Trevi Fountain in Rome. And a lot of the Italian uh, centers of cultural impact have these fountains. Here in Chicago you find the fountain behind me. Um, this fountain actually at the top of every hour shoots a huge thing of water into the air. Whoa! different uh, mytho mythological uh, horses that are spewing water and you get this beautiful view that I'll pan once I get done talking here and you can kind of see how it's really in the center of the city and really the heart of the city is where this fountain is. It's really wonderful to be here um, and see the way the artist kind of took this wonderful location and applied it to and, and put in water and things like that. So enjoy the view of Chicago as I uh, walk to the left here and yeah it's just a wonderful place to be. class I wanted to do one thing uh, that I think is important for us as artists and as uh, just appreciators of beauty and of art and of the aesthetics of everything that is life um, I wanted to kind of talk to you about how when you're looking at a building or when you're looking at a you know a scene from the mountains one thing that's really important is to zoom in to see you know a little detail and then zoom out to see the bigger picture. So as you're looking up at this building, you can zoom in and kind of like visualize the details of each indi individual uh, intricate brick. Then if you zoom back out, you can see the building as a whole and what that's like. So you kind of get those different aesthetic views and the different kind of look to the building and things like that. So that's something that's really important to do as a viewer and appreciator of aesthetic life. Yeah, the beauty of life. So I hope that helps you when you're kind of looking at the different beauty that's around you in the world. Thanks so much. So behind me is the Art Institute of Chicago. I wanted to point out just a couple things here. We're not going to go inside, but if you want to, and the assignment is going to be if you click below this video. So if you go below the video, there's a link to take a tour of the Art Institute of Chicago through a program and a website called Google 
Art Project. Google Art Project is this wonderful site that you can go through and look at the different works of art inside of the Art Institute and all the a huge variety of different museums throughout the world. So I would suggest, and if it's your assignment, you gotta do it, going in to through the website below, look around and follow the directions that are stated below this video. Um, the Art Institute's kind of a wonderful building. They actually have two wings. Over here we have the kind of the old structural building that housed it. And then they actually went and they created a full new modern wing. So this is where the modern art is. And then behind you right now is where actually the more classic impressionism and things like that are happening. Uh, the modern wing is just a wonderful space. We've got all these different modern artists that we're studying actually in this class. And it'll be really fun to see what you can do as you're going through and playing with the different Google Art project. So I'm excited to see those assignments. If you don't have it as an assignment, I'm excited for you to just explore all this video you like. Have fun. Heading out of Chicago on a plane. Just wanted to say it's been a great video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed your virtual field trip. Bon voyage.